Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Notes to My Legal Self. I am Olga Mack. I'm your host. This is a place where we have conversations that matter to in-house professionals. And what matters to in-house professionals is all kinds of stuff, from substantive conversations about law and practice to operations to hobbies, communities, and all kinds of things, because in-house professionals are human first and humans come with diverse interests today i have a fantastic guest we will be focusing on my one of my favorite topics which is legal operations i think if you're an house professional your success yes partially depends on your knowledge and experience which is stable stakes but your ability to scale yourself your advice and ultimately have impact is highly correlated with your ability to operationalize it. So legal ops is a big, big, big chunk in that. And today I have a fantastic guest who will discuss where we are, where we're going and the opportunity. So two things, um, ask questions. What I find is that people who are part of the conversations, even people who say hello, but definitely people who actually ask questions, definitely get a lot more out of it. So do yourself a favor, make sure that your investment into being here and being part of it really pays off. So ask questions, say hello, be part of the conversations. And two, I am blessed with an opportunity to talk to thought leaders, doers, builders in this industry now for well over decades in all kinds of forums. Uh, and my conversations are all, almost always driven by you. Uh, so please let me know if there's somebody who should be part of the show, who should be part of the conversation that we can collectively learn from. Um, I respond to many, almost all messages. Um, the great place to put your suggestions is either in direct message on LinkedIn or in the comments below. I receive it all and I definitely follow up. So with that in mind, we're going to begin the show. Tom, so excited for this conversation. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Stevenson. Uh, I am the Director of Legal Operations for Credit Karma. Uh, in addition to uh, my current daytime role, I also am very active in the legal operations community through mentorship, volunteering, uh, educational summits, and now really trying to be able to help tell the story of how legal operations has evolved and where it is going at the intersection of law firms, legal technology, and corporate in-house departments. So just a little bit about me and, and kind of nerding out and excited today for our conversation. Nerding out is what we do best here on this Notes to My Legal Self. So you are among friends and that's going to be fun. And, you know, we just talked in the uh, in the hair and makeup room how we both have an excellent choice of shirts. So um, with, with, uh, going with that, um, I love that you are Credit Karma leading the operations. Uh, I am curious, you know, how did you get there? What was the scenic route you took to, to be in this position today? Each person has a unique story. And I, you know, my own personal journey was from over a decade in law firm experience from paralegal to legal operations in a law firm environment that quite frankly, didn't have the definition of legal operations. So the transferable skills continued to just be building blocks, navigating through a legal jungle gym. Uh, that took me to head of legal operations at Teladoc Health prior to this role, where uh, I led our M&A teams and really focused on how do you be nimble, how are you lean, and how do you utilize innovative technology solutions when on Monday you're pivoting left and by Wednesday you're pivoting right. So it's just a little bit of, of the end-to-end -end experience I've had uh, to get me into this seat uh, at Credit Karma. Oh, I didn't know what you're talking about, left or right? Yeah, right, <laughs> back, forward, up, down, it's all the same. Yeah, I've been part of those teams. It's a really interesting experience when, when you lead agile teams like that. You definitely learn a lot on the, spot, on the job. Um, you know, I'm actually going to follow up because you said you're highly involved in all kinds of initiatives and having conversations with the industry, mentorship relationship, uh, defining best practices, all kinds of stuff. I, I actually will ask for your recommendation. You know, you know, where, where, where are you involved? Share with us. Where can we find you? And two, 
uh, like, what are your recommendations? Like, like, where do people in all kinds of stages of their legal ops journey, you know, beginning, middle, or end? Because I want to make sure we don't just include folks who graduated from law school, but actually all of us have an opportunity to pivot throughout our entire life from, you know, birth to death. Um, and that's an equal opportunity for everyone. So I want to make sure you share kind of the, the places, the practices um, that, you know, all of us in all parts of a career can follow to be part of the journey. Yeah. So in the near future, next week, I'll be speaking at ILTACON and in conjunction with Carl Morrison, the director of legal operations for MGM International Resorts, uh, we'll be on panels and keynotes that kind of bring legal operations, I would say, to a different audience, if you will. When I was first approached and started to brainstorm with Joy Rush, who puts on the ILTACON uh, conference, it was law firms want to hear more about what's on the other side of corporate legal in-house departments. They want to partner more with you. So we're breaking down the stigma of it's more than just submitting your accruals on time and not adhering to our billing guidelines because you submitted something 30 days late. And it's, what do you see on that side and how can we connect the dots? So from that, it's really piggybacking onto where are you sitting right now and where do you want to be? And I think the journey is different for everyone. We have lawyers that are bucking the trend and not going to AMLAW 50 private practice uh, straight out of law school. They're maybe taking internships at places like Evasort, which turns into legal technology roles. And then you have people who were legal professionals in any aspect of that, e-discovery, law firm, maybe, you know, claims management for the government who are saying, I want to be in-house and I want to help the business drive efficiency and support it from an operational standpoint to run legal like a business. So the TLDR is, I think anyone can start by understanding where they wanna be and back into it. So we have law firms and lawyers who are excited about attending ILTACON. We had a group of hungry people who went to clock back in May at CGI. And then we have a lot of events uh, later this year um, through organizations and industries. So ACC, Concero, there's just a lot to be taken in. Um, and I think that's what's really great about this profession. Yeah. So Gina says hello. Hi, Gina. Thank you for having the courage. I appreciate that. Iltacon, I'm challenging you publicly to beat me on my shirt there. I am definitely going there. So you now have a mission and a challenge. Let's see if your shirt is going to be more fun, fun than mine. <laughs> I will I will one-up you and say that while Ooh. my my clothing is just as um fun and you know flirty as i am carl morrison the person who i am doing with who i have known for over a decade in the paralegal community he is one that brings fantastic shoes so i see an, a photo opportunity i see a little fun drink in hand let's go to a legal conference and actually have fun because isn't that what everybody else does absolutely and I love that you accepted the challenge without knowing my closet. You are in for a challenge, my friends. Tom, I have many virtues and showing up dressed up is one of them. So you got yourself a friend there. Um, this is so cool. Uh, I really love that ILTA is now transitioning to including more in-house. I also have seen the same trend. I don't know if you've seen it at the ABA as well. They actually have now a GC podcast. I spoke at it. So I love that this profession is acknowledging the contribution and growth of in-house leaders and including them as keynote speakers and will embrace our quirks and shirts and all of that because we will show up with a bang. Um, let's talk about this industry because in, in, in many ways talking about kind of where we speak and where to be, you know, we're alluding sort of to the challenges where we are, and then most importantly, where are we going? <laughs> the two things to take away from this question are, where did we come from? There's a lot of historical information, but quite frankly, it's always evolving just like the industry, which leads to where are we going? We are just getting started. So let's back it up. Legal operations, we're talking about business processes, activities that legal professionals, the, they can be anything with a comma JD after their name, not that in front of their name. They can be individuals that come from the law firm, from the tech, heck, from an accounting firm. Um, these are professionals who enable legal departments to really serve their clients more effectively 
by just applying business and technical practices to the delivery of legal services. So we think of legal operations as running legal like a business, and that can be applied even on the law firm side. So before we were looking at corporate legal operations as something that was, you know, the Connie Brentons and the Mario Carrolls and the Steph Corys were at, you know, large companies that ultimately saw the value in legal operations, but it was really one-sided. It was corporate in-house and it quite frankly wasn't top of mind for people until COVID. <laughs> that was when the bridge broke. That's when we said, hey, running legal like a business means we have to also have the business perspective of go home, pack your stuff up. We don't know when we'll be back. And that creates a lot of problems when, for example, you may have a we'll call it an antiquated system when it comes to how you store documents. I or maybe I don't know what you're talking about. No. What are you talking about? That never happens to anyone. Tell, tell, do tell. So you have never had an antiquated process <laughs> with document <laughs> management systems? Surprise. Not shocking. when I was the general counsel. How about that? <laughs> but no, go ahead. Do tell. <laughs> I think that that is, that is a key. Your response actually, I think, is, is a good segue into legal operations right now is a is is a, a blue sea there is lots of opportunity out there and quite frankly we don't know what is past where we have seen on the horizon and i think a good way to look at the steering of the profession does start with general counsels and those leading the top of in-house corporate legal departments to have not only a buy-in of legal operations, but understand what it means to have a strong legal operation function. Look, if you have a strong legal operations function, it will champion innovation and change by building processes that drive greater efficiencies. So there's so much on the plate of law firms and legal tech vendors. This is the reason why going to ILTACON and having these discussions at the intersection of law firms, legal tech, and corporate in-house allows us to realign and focus on the areas that impact the delivery and value of legal services. Yeah, yeah, no, this, this is absolutely important. You said a couple of things. Before I go there, we have someone who uh, says hello. Th thank you, Ashraf. Um, others, please ask questions, say hello. Again, more fun, you'll get more out of the conversation. You said a couple of things. I've been taking notes. Um, I really love that you define legal professionals more than JD, more than being a member of the bar, more than being a lawyer, more than any of this, and the backgrounds are diverse. Um, we see it across all business functions, and the logical question is, why not law? I, I challenge folks to answer that question. That is a really hard question to answer in the modern business. I want to dive deep a little bit on this legal as a business. Like, What is your definition of that? Uh, because that's an amorphous term. Yeah, you're right. Connie talks a lot about it. Um, I'm just curious um, how you see it, practically speaking, in a day to day. What does that mean to you? Running it like a business is making business data driven decisions to steer the direction that aligns with the overall value and strategy of the company. So let's unpack that. We start with the company at the top and operations supporting it. So throw out the word legal. We know that COOs have a vital role when it comes to corporations. We know that at large and law firms, we have managing partners that are specifically pulled off of maybe even being on cases to help run a law firm as a business. This is a practice that is done on both sides of the equation. So what we're now doing post COVID is saying, hey, it's not just about ALSPs or shifting costs from law firms to inside because we're trying to take away the business. But how can we use technology? How can we use strategies to really strengthen and enhance the way that we hire professionals with backgrounds in finance, marketing, data analytics, learning and development, and more to help identify strategic investments that build capacity for the organization? That's that's what the core of, of, of legal operations is. And quite frankly, I think the vernacular that we need to start adopting in order to help move the profession forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have Luigi 
thanking you for your insights. And I am with you, Luigi. I, I, I agree. This is a profoundly great conversation. I, I do love the point that, Tom, you made that instead of telling lawyers that they're not sufficient because they don't know finance or some other stuff, it's a little bit like, you know, blaming a fish for swimming or a bird for flying. Um, perhaps it's an opportunity to, to have a menagerie of all kinds of contributors who have skills and can add to the conversation and to the legal function and business as a whole. I really love the way you think. Um, you also mentioned a couple of times the word strong legal operation function. That's another term that people kind of throw around, curious what that means to you. And then if you are a legal ops leader, you know, at various levels, depending on the organization, there may be levels of that. What does that mean at every level and how can you become that? First, there are tons of resources out there. So I would say that at the core of any profession going from, let's use the e-discovery movement, for example. We found out through that, through that movement and the transformation and impact that e-discovery has on a business, it started with education and furthering the profession to strengthen it as an ecosystem. We had the vendors that were helping with the new technology, the law firms that were saying, you're right, we have to start complying with, you know, ESI protocols and court mandates to shift to technology for a number of reasons that are all business related. And so at the end of the day, a strong legal operations function strategically partners and invests in our knowledge, our expertise and resources to help us explain what legal operations is as we further the profession. So, you know, I think it's, it's paramount and really important at the end of the day that we stop and we say, how can we ultimately continue to move it forward by being aligned on the same talk and the same information to share with each other as the community grows? And so for me at Credit Karma, I use different tactics and I've mentored at different times, what it looks like for legal operations. We have large, uh, you know, corporations that have legal operations departments of 10, 15, 50. But the stats really say that most legal operations departments are two people or less. So how are you running it lean? How are you looking, you know, forward looking with data analytics and decision making, uh, dashboards. That's how we are making all of our decisions here by turning program managers and opportunities to use non-business uh, or non, non-law uh, careers into the business intersection here. So hire accounting people to help with our legal operations finance. You hire somebody who is uh, a coder or maybe has uh, advanced data analytics skills for your legal operations tech role. Hire somebody who has been a, a project manager for the big four to lead your overall legal operations project management initiatives. I mean, thinking outside of the box when it comes to career frameworks, I think is, is one of the unique, uh, strong uh, tools that we keep in our toolbox ultimately to help us really further the profession. The question of how my small army has a large presence <laughs> is a number one question I ask myself as an in-house practitioner at every role, as general counsel, associate general counsel, counsel, you name it. So that is a really important question to ask. And then more importantly, how do you scale that impact? Very important. Um, let's talk about the extended team because that is a logical answer to having a large presence with a small army um law firms and relationship with a law firm are they more than just cost center or rfp submitters like what is it relationship with law firms how can it be better how can you leverage to show up and have a very large impactful presence that you as a leader in the legal department should have? I think we can all agree, whatever seat you are sitting at, whatever side you are coming from, just driving value through innovation is a core element that moves the legal operations function from a cost center to a value creator. So if we just start with that assumption right there, let's connect the dots. So from the law firm side, I used to, when I was on the law firm side, 
always, you know, roll my eyes of, okay, we got to do pre-bills to get it out, to submit accruals, but what, how, how can we predict what is happening in the future? And this is what they're asking. Well, on the legal ops side in-house, we're on the same way. We're asking for accruals before the end of the month to try and have a magic eight ball that we don't know what is going to show up when we flip it upside down. So it's, it's, it's important for legal operations to build the bridge with law firms and vice versa. So I always say, you know, inside a corporation, legal operations, their first friends are going to be HR, finance, IT. Who are we hiring? Are the bills being paid? And does my technology work? When it comes to law firms, it's always, okay, who are my legal professionals that are help submitting e-billing? Who are, you know, the main uh, lawyers or legal professionals that are working on this case? When I have a question about what is the status of this case? Should we look out for any pending litigation costs that aren't accounted for in accruals to, hey, we're trying to wrap up and it looks like you submitted a budget of this, but you're not quite there. Where are we on this? And building that bridge and having that collaborative communication, I think it's, it's, it is the Im important glue that will help keep us sticking together in, in the trifecta. Let's talk more about how you transition from eye roll <laughs> because it sounds like happening on both sides, find the common ground and what you said, building bridges. What is the sort of practical step from eye roll to building bridges and how do you find that common ground? And eye roll is, it's a business. <laughs> None of us ever get what we want. I mean, look, if legal ops had their way, we would have triple the size of our departments, but quite frankly, we, we can't look at it that way. So we have to be able to make decisions that are not only from our point of view, but understanding that our role in legal operations is not just a self-serving interest. It is about the business needs. And so eye rolling goes from, okay, well, I'm not a fan of this. So how do we make it better? How can we get to yes? If we can get to yes and take in incremental steps each way, the eye rolls become less prevalent. And it's like, oh, these are my friends. These are my good people. These are my good Judies. These are the people that will help me get to what I need to do, whether it's rushing at the end of the year to submit accruals to, oh, we just heard about the budget needs to be revamped and we have 48 hours. Let's hop on a quick call. Having that relationship is, is paramount uh, to success. And I will take it one step further by saying legal operations starts with a lot of things. People sometimes think that contract management is the first way to go. Some people think that it's financial and vendor management. But I think that business intelligence and the working relationships that you have, you got to start there. You have to start with good working relationships, understanding the business, and understanding who's on the other side of a potential negotiation. Oh, so many nuggets. I hope you're all kind of just absorbing. Uh, I don't know about your osmosis skills, but I've perfected mine over years. And that was a really positive osmosis experience for me. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. That's I how you get from the eye roll to non-eye roll. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I just love that. Um, we are unfortunately coming to the end. But the good news, I have a few more questions and I intend to you put them to good use. I'm also asking folks who are always us today, if you have questions, let me know. I may, I may ask your question instead of mine. I'm kind of, um, you know, inclusive like that and, and able to sacrifice my interests. So definitely, definitely contribute questions. But, uh, you know, the question of technology is something that really is, you know, even if you don't start there, which you shouldn't. Even if you think of other things like relationship important, which you should. <laughs> but at some point, we live in 2022, technology is part of life. If you weren't in denial before COVID, I believe you no longer can be. Uh, that world is gone. It's gone for good or bad. It's no longer around. So technology is here to stay and we must develop a relationship with the technology that is appropriate and helpful, productive, and allow us to have flourishing career, however long we wanna have them. So what technology role is played and how can be leveraged to have a larger presence of your legal department? So many ways to answer this. I will TLDR it in if technology is, if you believe technology is the solution to your problem, as you mentioned earlier, stop, 
put it in reverse, back it up and start over. I think as a business data-driven decision-making value creator, revenue protector, however you want to slice and dice it, we have to think about what is getting us, what is not get, what is the roadblock that is impeding us from getting to yes. And a lot of times it's, let's go buy this technology solution to turn on a light that we think is going to solve the problem. But really it's, is it a process? Is it a change management? Is it an adoption? Is it, we just need to maybe take the car back into the dealership and go get an oil change. So for me, technology is being, is a complementary second thought to the overall issue at hand. I love that. That is very interesting. And on that note, uh, what is sort of, what do you see happening in, you know, I don't know, take a time frame, one, two, five, ten. I don't know how, how long I had you like thinking, uh, you pick your time frame. What do you see happening, short, medium, long term? Where do you think we're going specifically? With res- I want to root it a little bit in law firm because that's a key relationship for many of us. It will be a key relationship going forward. Uh, it's valuable. It's important. Those are, as you said, your good duties. So how do you how do you how do you structure the good duty relationship to make sure that? It is productive and really allows you to amplify your message, your impact, and be effective. It's about leveraging those relationships. So this is my this is my call to action. <laughs> I want to hear from law firms. I want to hear from law programs. I want to hear from the ABA. I want to be able to include people on the other side of the conversation that continue to drive it. So there are a lot of great law firms, chief innovation officers out there that are helping to do the work, you know, from David Wang to what, you know, Norton Fulbright is doing to just a lot of great innovation out there uh, in the uh, law firm space. Womble Dixon has a wonderful, uh, you know, GC council uh, program as well too. So that being said, I think the key is, is, understanding what law firms want. And in doing that, I think that there's going to be a lot more common ground um, that, that, that we can unpack together. And through that, that helps move the needle forward. We're, we're driving the ball down the football field, right? You're just the quarterback for, for championing uh, and helping connect the dots of legal operations. And oh God, I'm waiting for the, like this cheerleader football, like ping pong back and forth. So let me know when you want to tag in for this. <laughs> just you know doing the (laughs) the absorption portion of the osmosis so this 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 was good i'm with you um i guess maybe i'll ask you the last question around what individually when you show up you know what we can do in education or advocacy or certification or whatever technology solutions like whatever what can we do because that's an important key relationship uh technology could be helpful building relationship is important what else can we do where can we find the resources to um to do better i think the resources to do better first starts with one what seat are you in and what are you trying to learn so oftentimes i have legal operation or people who are looking to get into legal operations to come from the law firm side to work to the in-house side so i say go learn business acumen, you know, go join clock, go, you know, go here, you know, go join programs, go join networks and communities that focus on legal operations from the in-house side that serves under legal operations. If it is from the, you know, legal tech side, I'm always saying, if you are trying to bring out or roll out a new technology solution that you are promising is going to fix something end to end, Ask the other individuals that are showing up to the table from the law firm side and from the legal ops side, what do you need? I just, I think encouraging more of us to connect, to collaborate, and to look at this from from different points, but embracing those points to, to highlight the commonalities. I really think as, you know, French vanilla fantasy as it sounds, I think that is the next step that we need to go. And quite frankly, how we can continue to educate and advocate to move the profession forward. Oh, I just love it. Um, I love the message of connect and collaborate. Um, and find- Aren't we just dots? 
We're just dots <laughs> trying to all figure it out. I'm sure what law firms are struggling with, legal operations is struggling with, and legal tech's like, man, we wish we can build it for you. You know, yeah, I mean. But what a colorful dots we are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, Tom, thank you so much. We thank said so we'd come to that. the end. This was wonderful. I'm going to ask you one more thing. Please, if folks got nothing else from this conversation because this was not colorful enough, what is the one takeaway they should have um, to think about throughout their day today and for days to come? When you think about legal operations, think of it as kind of like the Wizard of Oz. You need good wit, uh, great courage, a empathetic and sometimes self-serving heart that is protecting of others and ultimately being resilient and getting up each time you stumble. I mean, we are all trying to learn together. And if we lean into each other, if we bring law firms to corporate in-house, to the legal tech side, who knows where we will be in the profession down the road. So uh, for those out there, continue to reach out to the other side of the aisle, if you will, and continue to help move it forward. Uh, a little plug is that uh, in the coming weeks, there's going to be a new podcast um, called Dear Legal Ops, and it's going to really focus on education and advocacy that furthers the profession and strengthens our ecosystem. So we're going to be talking um, and reading letters from the community that really hit and highlight about strategically partnering to invest in this knowledge, this expertise, and these resources to share stories and lived experiences within the legal operations ecosystem. Oh, I am writing a Dear Abby letter. I think it's coming up. It will be colorful, all right? So cool. Well, Thank you for sharing that. Are you, <laughs> are you doing it? Or who, who, who is behind the, the this podcast? TBD. Oh, yeah. the suspense. The suspense. The suspense. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you knew you couldn't just get it out there for free so <laughs> well the suspense is too much yeah. uh but i know it's gonna be good and i will start my dear abby letter because it's gonna be coming it's gonna be good thank you so much all for joining this was a great conversation for me this connect and collaborate is a very important message uh, i've asked myself the question of how my small army of two, five, even a hundred, I think is a small army could have a really large presence because, you know, no matter how many people you have, you are serving many more people in your organization than the size of yours. So that's a really important question. And this connect and collaborate, thinking of your extended family, so to speak, your extended team, uh, on the law firm side is very important. The role technology can play and really enable you to scale that and have a greater impact. Thank you so much for joining. As I mentioned before, really good time to suggest other guests for my show. This is a place where we learn together. This is a place to connect and to collaborate to Tom's point. Um, sounds like there's some really great stuff coming up that we will be watching. So I encourage you to check out his LinkedIn because I have a sneaking suspicion that he will be posting something there. With all of that, thank you so much for joining. It is a true pleasure and honor to have conversations with this community. I am really excited and look forward to more next week. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. <laughs>